My name is Tony Hollyhurst. I am the Engineering Director for Anaplan in London. Uh, today, I've got Caitlin with me as well. I'm going to take you through a little bit about culture um, and how culture is at the forefront of how we built a brand new, as in brand spanking new, engineering unit in London. I'm going to take just a few minutes because probably not many people know what or who Anaplan are, just to give you a context set so that Caitlin's talk makes a little more sense. I hope that's okay. Bear with me, trust me, it's not too bad. It's a lot better without my face. Okay. Anaplan, Anaplan is a tech unicorn. So that means we are valued at over a billion dollars. It means we're a startup, it means we haven't IPO'd yet. Uh, we were founded in York, which means we're British, which is kind of cool. We're one of the few British unicorns that exists. Uh, we are, however, he headquartered in San Francisco. The reason we've done that is because in San Francisco you get technical talent, industry contacts, networks, relationships with other cloud companies, all of those cool things. A bit more marketing. Apologies. I wanted to show this, and the, the reason I want to show this, and, and trust me, it's nothing to do with the marketing. It says up here, 650 uh, employees in 15 countries. This is actually our current deck. This is the one we take to customers. This is, this is the corporate deck. 650 employees is out of date. We are now well north of 800. So even though this is kept up to date on a regular basis, it's already out of date. We are in hyper growth, but we've been in hyper growth for a long time. I work as part of a division which we call R&D, which is kind of cool. R&D consists of product, I'm sure you all know about, operations, again obvious, and engineering. Last year, that R&D group was 120 people. I checked today, it's 220. So we have gone from 120 to 220 in the space of a year. The London office was opened on September the 26th, 2016. And it was me and one other guy, a guy called Steve. So it was literally me and Steve in an office in Soho, looking at each other, <laughs> wondering, how, how do we make this work? Um, we had a lot of support. Um, when you're a champion, you it's like a tech event for startups. I'm sorry? Okay, no, no. I was sure. like, when you're a champion, um, your company. No. Um, don't mind taking questions now, but also come see me afterwards and we, we can catch up and talk on that. Is that okay? Yeah. Awesome, thank you. Um, we've gone from those two, me and Steve, to now 40 people in London, which is seven scrum teams, which is kind of cool. Uh, we're the only single platform recognized by Gartner in four different quadrants. Does that mean anything to anybody here? Because when I heard that from our marketing guys, it meant very, very little to me at all. It's actually kind of cool. It means we're doing very, very well. So the success really, really helps in terms of how we build and grow our organization. As the company had grown, the reason that London started right up front, right in the first place, and we had this big place in York, we've got this beautiful building right on the river. It's an old bonding warehouse. It's got balconies. It's, got, it's, it's fantastic. We've got a great building in San Francisco, proper hipster vibe, warehouse down in the North Bay. It's beautiful. It's really, really cool. But why on earth would you want to go to London? Well, the reason we wanted to open a London office was because we needed real high quality tech talent. We needed people who knew high performance computing, distributed systems, how to do horizontal scale, how to deliver quality. I'm sure you all know, but that means in my head at least, we need to be agile. Really, where else do you find the talent? You come to London, right? You guys know this stuff. Um, that's my scene setting. So we started with two, we grew quite strongly. What I wanted to talk, or what Caitlin talked to you about, is the vision, the values, the reasons why we hired in the way we did to get from that two people to that 40 plus people. Well, now that's how I'll introduce Caitlin. Hello. Thank you. Right. 
that's me. Thank you, Tony. Uh, Tony is my boss, so I've got to make sure that I do really well in the speech. Um, so the more that you could laugh or clap, the better for me. Thank you. Um, so I'm a team lead and also a, a software engineer at Anaplan. I've been doing software engineering for about 14 years. Um, and I've worked in various companies, uh, including gambling companies and uh, investment banking, Goldman Sachs being one of them. And now I'm very happily at Anaplan. And I have been there for six, seven months now, so since March, which pretty much makes me an old hand in the London office. Uh, outside of work, I'm a mom to a two and a half year old, and that's, that's my daughter Isabel over there. And one of the reasons that I wanted to have a picture of her is because being a mom and being somebody outside of work is just as important to me as being a developer and uh, associating myself. Is somebody clapping? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, is just as important to me and my, my priorities really changed. I know it sounds very cliched, but my priorities really changed when I became a mom. And I wanted to find a company suddenly, you know, money wasn't important. Well, it was important, but not as important anymore. And um, my family really took center stage, but I also wanted to, I felt like if I was going to be away from my daughter, I wanted to be at a job that I really, really enjoyed. And thankfully, Anna Plan has done that for me. So the reason that I'm up here talking to you today um, and the things that we're going to cover, oops, wrong way. I'll get it eventually, is, um, what is our culture at Anaplan? How do we foster it? How do we grow it at scale? Because we're growing very quickly. We're going through an accelerated growth plan. We got, uh, is it $90 million, I think, of investment in uh, December of last year. And our new CEO, who's been with us since about February, I think, um, has really invested, he's, he's got great vision and he really wants to invest in R&D. So that is why we're growing so much. I, I know that when, when I joined in March and Tony said um, his plan was to go from, so at the time that I joined we were only nine people and his plan was to go to 45 people at the end of the year and I thought that was ridiculous because we were sitting in a basement office of a WeWork in, Lund uh, in Soho and um, you know we, we used to joke that we didn't have any sunshine um, and now we're in a beautiful WeWork office in Waterhouse Square just near Chancery Lane and the office is packed. So the thing, the, the big question was we need to grow so quickly, we're investing so much in R&D and in people and we need to grow our product and you know, we, you saw all of the logos that, were, that, that Tony showed, we are picking up customers at the rate of knots. How do we grow the company and you know, start up this office in London, but still maintain the culture that we had when we only had nine people. So what we're gonna to cover today is uh, a bit about culture, which um, funnily enough, Nick had the same definition of culture that I had, so I'll just quickly skip over that slide. Uh, but also specifically, and somebody in the audience asked earlier about global culture versus culture just within your team. And so I'm going to cover some of the values that Anaplan has and the values that they set up. And also I'm going to talk about the steps that we have taken to create and also maintain our culture. And um, what we think is, is really important. So that's the, the definition of culture, the same as, as Nick's, the ideas, customs, and social behavior of particular people or society. But I think the most important thing there is people. So people are what make culture. Uh, but apart from, before I get onto the topic of people, let's discuss what our values are. Um, and a plan before some of their values were really based on being disruptive. So we, our competitors are people like IBM and Oracle um, and SAP. So those are huge companies. They've got loads of, you know, they've been around for ages. They've got enormous reputations. And, and here we're coming along with our product. And although the product has been in, uh, you know, in existence for about 10 years, we've actually only had proper customers and, uh, you know, been... I guess, 
productive for the last four years. Um, so our values have changed over time. So before, one of the key values was being a disruptor in the market, and now our values are more uh, focused on the people. And one of the awesome things that I think about our values is that this wasn't just a board that came up with the values and said, here you go, this is what we want you to do. This was actually, we had uh, culture pillars um, in all of the locations across the, across the world. And they went into each location and they interviewed people and they said, what is it that makes Anaplan special to you? What is it that you think makes it unique? What is it that you bring to work every single day? And they, they gave answers. We had over 70% participation, which if you've got a company of, of about six, 800 people now, 800 people, I think that's pretty impressive, uh, particularly amongst engineers. Engineers aren't the most um, uh, participatory people when it comes to surveys and answering questions and doing the whole marketing thing. So um, I think that it was really cool that these are the things that we came up with. So the survey was done, the word, you know, kind of a big word cloud was done and there was a big kind of unveiling about our values and these are the things we came up with. We are open, we are authentic, we're inclusive we're collaborative, and we're creative. So these are the values that underpin everything that, uh, that I've thought of in terms of what I think makes and maintains our culture. So you can't have a tech speech without a bit of Dilbert. <laughs> um, as Tony said, we're a mature startup, so we do have that startup vibe and that we've got flexible hours, we can come and dress casually, we can, uh, you know, we, there's always food. Uh, food is very important in Anaplan. Um, we'll always be eating, there's, there's a Slack channel devoted to the shopping, um, you know, and what sort of chocolate bars we're gonna get, curly whirlies. I think one of the tweets was specifically about curly whirlies. So, you know, those are the, we don't have our own chef, we're getting there hopefully one day, maybe, Tony. Um, <laughs> but, um, so we have that. And because we're a mature startup, we don't necessarily have to worry about the money so much. The, the product is already great. The product is already making us money. What we need to really concern, concern ourselves about is where we're going off in the future. How do we keep the people? How do we attract the people that we want? And how do we maintain people there and keep them happy? So as I said earlier, people are key. The people are what make the company. It's the behavior that makes our company. So how do we choose our people? Specifically in the London office, we've been really um, uh, specific about it. We are a new office, so we don't necessarily have to follow the old patterns of the locations that were there before, but also we can borrow from them the things that have already worked. Uh, one of the things that um, I think are important are what is it that you're looking for in new hires? So we really, we clearly define our crit criteria and what we want from people that we're hiring. And in that, it's part of a discussion of interviewers. You train them more for what are you looking for in a person rather than just the test. We do have a test. Our hiring process is, has a tech test and it is pretty brutal. But um, key to that is what are the sort of people that we, that we want? And part of that is we want diversity of thought. We want people who question, who look under the hood, who ask, who are curious about how things really work. The sort of um, technical challenges that we face are not the kind of thing that you can look up on Stack Overflow. You can't look up the answer on Google if you don't know. These are things that you've got to sit here and you've got to really think about, in particular we code in Java, and we don't use big libraries and things that um, you know, that the kind of, you would have had experience of at lots of other companies. We're talking about knowing the ins and outs of garbage collection and, and really understanding the, um, the inner workings of the language constructs. And so we need people who are willing to do that and who are willing to think that way, um, but who don't necessarily already have those skills. So it's not like we're able to poach people from IBM, we've tried. Um, <laughs> So, so some of the things that are really important are ensuring that uh, we have, we are aligned on our requirements. Um, 
and we want people we want to hire people for their potential not necessarily for what they've already done we want to make sure that we're looking at people for trying to figure out whether or not they've got the kind of inquiring mind that we're looking for, not whether or not they've already created a multi-dimensional database and solved that, because that's quite rare. Um, so yeah, so that's why people, people are first. People are the most important thing, and it's really uh, key. Um, one of the things that Tony always talks about is one team, one dream. And although it's come a bit, become a bit of a, a, an eye roll moment at the moment when he, when he says that, um, uh, it's, it's important. So not only is it important that we get the right people, but once we've got the right people, we want to ensure that we make a good impression. And it's little things. It's ensuring that the person, when, once you've arrived, the new employee is actually expected. They feel expected, they feel welcome. So we make sure that they've got a desk and they have kits which they get to unpack. They have a very smooth onboarding process and it's something that we iterate through. So initially when I joined, there are a couple of kinks, and every single time we do it, we get better at it. Um, we introduce them to a team, we assign them a buddy. We make the onboarding process standardized so that it's repeatable and that um, it gets better every single time. We also have a, um, uh, a kind of a three day away in York at our office in York where all the new people for that month go to York and that happens within the first month of joining. And there they get lectures from um, HR, from product, from sales. Basically they get to meet everybody and they kind of get an overview of the company as a whole. And it's a great opportunity for everybody joining the company to kind of feel part of a team. Um, and also it's just, it's a, it's a great opportunity to see York if you haven't been up there before. It's really beautiful, the office over there. So the idea being that you want their first day to leave a good impression and to set them up for success as you go on. The next thing which I think is really crucial is that we are huge fans of giving and receiving feedback. So I was at the Lead Dev conference earlier in the year, and um, feedback was a hot topic. Particularly, um, Erica Carlson was one of the main speakers, and she said that feedback is a gift for the purpose of helping you grow. And I think that's something that's special about Anaplan, is they really care about helping you grow and ensuring that you mature, uh, not just as an employee, but also as a person. And it leads into, um, the next topic, which, or the next um, idea, which is leading by example. So <laughs> I had to have a cute something. Um, uh, now where was I? Looking at cute, cute rhinos, and then I got distracted, sorry, the mommy in me. Um, leading by example. So our CEO, Frank uh, Calderoni, is uh, a big fan of Cy Wakeman, and she talks about reality-based leadership. And in particular, she, she says things like, um, you know, ditch the drama, um, make sure that, you know, you're doing things based on reality and not based on what your mind is talking about. And, uh, you know, and he, he took us through some of his own experiences about ditching the drama. And so the, the mere fact that he was able to tell us about that, I think, I haven't heard a CEO speak like that before. And he is invested in Cy Wakeman coming into the company and um, he, uh, ensured that she trained some of our uh, leaders, so the directors and the VP level, they all went on training with Cy Wakeman to do that. And he's slowly um, spreading that out to the rest of the company through webinars and through us being able to ask questions. But it's something that he found useful and he wanted to ensure that the rest of the company did. And also in terms of feedback, our company does something called a manager survey which is a formal survey where everybody is allowed to um, give updates on their managers uh, twice a year. And it means that you get feedback anonymously as a manager, which isn't always comfortable. Um, but we are um, encouraged to share what we got. So I was encouraged to share the results of the survey with my direct reports. And similarly, the VP of engineering, Jack White, who, funnily enough, was at uh, eBay before us, um, 
he shared with his direct reports what his manager survey results were. And we are going to have a meeting next week to, to, for us to hear. So he's sort of two levels above us. And we're going to hear what his, his direct report said about him. And he's going to share that with us. So making it open and making it honest, I think, is really important. Um, so I've been talking a little bit over time, which means that I need to uh, go through the next ones a bit more quickly. But these aren't, these aren't necessarily as important, I think, as the people and the feedback and the example setting. So the next one is um, nurturing creativity. We have a hackathon um, where you know, everybody, I'm sure, here knows what a hackathon is about. Um, where we get people to do the kinds of things that they really want to do but don't necessarily get a chance to. We also encourage people to do guilds, to, to, to think of a guild topic and then have their um, chance to talk with people about something that isn't necessarily work-related. Um, we also allow time for exploration. We are an R&D team, after all, so we need to be able to do research. And we want to facilitate interests outside of work in that Part of setting the example, as a leader, I want to make sure that I leave on time. You know, I leave work on time, I don't expect people to stay late. Because people have lives outside of work, so you want to encourage whatever it is that they're doing that's not necessarily work-related. The next one that's also pretty important is collaboration and the things, you know, we are a global company, so we're trying to foster um, people working across that, and that's always difficult. One of the things that we use are Confluence, and we try and really keep Confluence up to date, but also we try and make sure that people see each other face to face and really meet, and part of that is with the onboarding, so that you meet people that aren't in your location. And another part of that is being allowed and being given the funding to go to locations other than the one that you're in. So I've been to York a number of times, and spoken to some of the people who have been at the company a lot longer. And it's not just managers that get to go, it's everybody. And Tony is really um, supportive of that and is not strict about funding. Also, education is, is and being able to spread knowledge. Um, Nick spoke about, I think, that earlier in his, in his slides about how um, it's important that you get somebody who is experienced to teach people who are less experienced and really to uh, f encourage ideas and new ways of thinking. The sort of technology that we work with, we really need to push the boundaries and, and have people thinking you know, in that cliched way outside of the box, but, but it's true. Um, and the way to do that is to allow people to do brown bags, to share the things that interest them, not necessarily something that you want them to be good at presenting, so you force them to do some kind of topic. Do actually the things that, that they're excited about. So we've got brown bags on machine learning and GPUs, which I'd never heard of before, which maybe says something about me as a programmer. But uh, also we've got somebody who, who's interested in JIRA as a topic, and so that's, that's something that um, he's got it guild for. And this is also being uh, leaders who motivate intrinsically. And this is something also in terms of leading by example. Tony is a big proponent of uh, Dan Pink's motivation model, which is that you should um, provide mastery, autonomy, and purpose in order to encourage people to be the best that they can be and to be the happiest in their job. Once you've taken away uh, people's earning potential, you know, that they didn't necessarily have to worry about money, not that they earned so much or so little, just that they earned enough that they didn't have to think about their salary, that they could really focus on, um, on on being, becoming good at what they do and having a choice in that. And it means not micromanaging. So luckily, Tony um, is able to model that, which means that all of his direct reports can model that, which means that the people that um, you know, are sort of uh, uh, juniors or who are developing themselves are, are going that way. Part of that also is, is recognizing people for the, um, the talents that they have. So we don't necessarily hire people as leaders. We hire people to come in sort of all on a, on a single level in a sense, and then we recognize them once they've joined the company to say, actually, you have natural leadership skills. Please come and you know, start up a team. And that has worked for us so far. We've, we've taken 
uh, existing teams, people who want to become leaders, and we kind of spawned off teams from that, and so it goes, and we allow them um, training, so part of the education thing, training, and um, again, feedback, allow, giving them the opportunity to fail, in a sense, as a leader, but knowing that they have the safety of their peers to be able to you know, if it doesn't work out, that they can go back to being just an individual contributor or to being a non-managerial person. And that's something we really focus on in the career, that you can become really senior without being a manager. And I think that's important in a development company. And then finally, the most important, well, not the most important thing, but something fun, is that we should have fun and celebrate success. And Part of that is eating together, celebrating together, spending time together. I put this Slack message on there because it's really, it's, it's very silly and it's the typical kind of conversation that we have about food. Um, so, yeah, so thank you very much for, for listening to me and I hope some of these things you can take and model in your own company when you're growing at speed.